Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of Biographies for my characters. So this time we're looking at no, the, the only Cardassian on my character list. And he has a full Cardassian crew, and this is this character is all themed around Cardassians. So uh, I created him for that purpose, and also because Cardassians came as a race with the the Gamma Pack, which I got when I made my um. Jemardar. <laughs> so I thought, yeah, I, I, let's not put that part of the pack to, to waste, so that's how he was created. Alright, let's jump right in. Okay, so this guy actually serves a very important purpose for me. So he's a tactical character, but he's built around a science build. And here's why. Let's jump into uh, skills. So, um, he's very heavily into science, even all, almost all the way to um, a full science build. But the reason I uh, created this guy with a science build is, um, with a high enough science, I can create Tactical Beam Overload 3 and Beam Fire at Will. So that's one of the many purposes that this guy serves, but this is probably the most important one. That aside... I'm using the Cardassian Intel Science Dreadnought to, well, further his science scene it. <laughs> and as a Cardassian, get your um, photographic memory. And his whole crew is also Cardassian. Let me just... Yeah, there we go. You guys can also see their uniforms. So I wish that um, Cardassian Disruptors were available. But... Uh, I mean, NPCs in-game use them, so hopefully we get to use them someday. But anyways, there's that. There's the ship. Let's jump onto the bridge to further exploit this character. Okay, welcome aboard the USS... Uh, what am I saying? The CUV Akar. Yep. So you may have noticed that the color palette for the UI is slightly different. But no, it's not the Cardassian UI, as that doesn't exist yet. But just in case you didn't know, you can change the color palette. And I'm using the Gorn one as... It, well, brown, green, all that. Pretty much the closest I can get to the Cardassian um, Alcars. But you got all these choices. It's nice, I suppose. Yeah, a little bit of brown and some white, some green. Yeah. So this is the bridge of um, that comes down with all Cardassian vessels, and you got my full Cardassian crew all around for theming, of course. So uh, yeah, let's just run around a bit. All right, this guy. That's an interesting hairstyle, isn't it? So um. All of them are wearing Cardassian uniforms and Cardassian hairstyles. So yeah, that's interesting. Anyways, let's uh, sit, down, sit down at the command chair and let, go into this guy's bio. While his feet plunge into the ground. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Donnell Nock. Now here's something interesting about um, naming. I've noticed that um, most... Um, most people, uh, most Cardassians use simply the last name to communicate with each other. Although it might be like Asian cultures where the last name, uh, the family name, sure name, actually comes first. But uh, th there was no real clarity on that. Like Elam Garrick, we all call him Garrick. No one really calls him Elam. Maybe that's because we use um, last names. They use last names to address each other anyway. Like. You're not going to call Dr. Bashir Julian unless you're really close to him, but anyways then, let's get into the bio. Danel Nock was just a teenager when the Cardassians rebelled during the Dominion War. So I'm bringing Dominion War into this, right? <laughs> As Cardassia was in crisis following the war, we sought to assist, uh, he thought to assist by joining the military. As Cardassian society experienced reform after reform, he found himself as a gull in the Cardassian Self-Defense Force. 
And the, the Cardassian Self-Defense Force was mentioned in um, the Star Trek Online lore, so I thought, let's put it in. Over the years in the TDF, he fought in numerous engagements, most against the true, the true way. Later, he would transfer into Starfleet when the Federation allowed Cardassians to enlist, as was how this character came to be, <laughs> becoming a captain, but was only there to fly for Cardassian intelligence. At Starfleet Academy, he was known as Plain and Simple Knock. He ex as he um, excelled in academics, showed no other unique traits. When Cardassian intelligence were able to build new starships, that being these, the Cardassian intel ships, Nock returned to the PDF and became a legate. Legate? Legate. Sorry, legate. <laughs> he continues to defend Cardassia and the, Card and the galaxy with his allies from Starfleet, while still gathering intel from Cardassia. So, of course, Cardassians are stuck in being either um, KDF or Starfleet, but I tried to put this guy as close to Cardassian, fully Cardassian as I could. Of course, the beam in and beam out um, effect is not Cardassian, it's Starfleet, and also his um, security escort is also Starfleet. Hey, get off me. <laughs> As for title, plain and simple came from the Gamma um, set, uh, the Gamma pack, which I've uh, talked about a lot. The Gamma pack is um, one of the more uh, valuable pa packs out there. It's quite good. It's quite good, yeah. Hi. <laughs> Anyways, that's pretty much it for this guy. So, fully Cardassian. I even have the Spiral Wave Disruptors, which are among some of the best disruptors in the game, so there's that. Now, well, I've already done a build on this guy, so you get, I'll put the description to this in the... I mean, well, oh, you're making it wrong again. <laughs> I'm gonna put the link to uh, this the video of this build in, in the description, so... Yeah, well, that's it for this video, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified of future videos and to help out this channel. I'll make the next video as soon as possible. See you guys next time. Bye!